Hey people, it's Nice Stokey. This is from CBS News. Automated trucking, a technical milestone that could disrupt hundreds of thousands of jobs, hits the road. Companies are already testing driverless trucks on America's roads. The technology will bring untold profits, but it may cost thousands of truckers their livelihoods. You know that universal sign we give truckers hoping they'll sound their air horns? Well, you're going to be hearing a lot less honky in the future, and with good reason. The absence of an actual driver in the cab. We may focus on the self-driving car, but autonomous trucking is not an if, it's a win, and the win is coming sooner than you might expect. As we first reported in March, companies have been quietly testing their prototypes on public roads. Right now, there's a high-stakes, high-speed race pitting the usual suspects. Google and Tesla and other global tech firms against small startups smelling opportunity. The driverless semi will convulse the trucking sector and the two million American drivers who turn a key and maneuver their big rig every day. And the winners of this derby, they may be poised to make untold billions. They'll change the U.S. transportation grid and they'll emerge as new kings of the road. It's one of the great touchstones of Americana. The romance of possibility of the open road. All hail the 18-wheeler hugging these asphalt ribbons, transporting all our stuff across the fruited plains from sea to shining sea. Though we may not give it a second thought when we click the free shipping icon, truckers move 70% of the nation's goods. But trucking cut a considerably different figure on a humid Sunday last summer on the floor of the turnpike. Starsky Robotics, a tech startup, may have been driving in the right lane. They passed the competition with 35,000 pounds of steel running down a busy highway with nobody behind the wheel. The test was a milestone. Starsky was the first company to put a truck on an open highway or a human on board. Everyone else in the game with the know-how keeps a warm body in the cab as a backup. For now, anyway, if you don't hear about this, you're not alone. In Jackson, we've talked to Jeff Widows, his son Tanner, Linda Allen, and Eric Richardson, all truckers, and are all astonished to learn how fast the, far this technology has become. Linda Allen, I wasn't aware till I ran across one on the tour return, by, and that just, it just scares me, I can't imagine, but I didn't know anything about it. Joe Werfheim, no one's talking about it at work. Jeff Widows, nobody, never, never. Eric Richardson, I didn't know it come so far, and I'm thinking, wow, it's here. He's right, the autonomous truck revolution is here. It just isn't so much discussed. I don't see me radios and not in state houses. And transportation agencies are not inclined to pump the brakes. From Florida, hang a left and drive 2,000 miles west on I-10 and hit the proving grounds of a company with a fleet of 41 autonomous rigs. John Wi-Fi, this is a shop floor or this is a laboratory? Chuck Price, it's both. In the guts of the Sonoran Desert outside Tucson, Chuck Price is a... Chuck Price is chief product officer at Too Simple, a privately held global autonomous trucking outfit valued at more than a billion dollars with operations in the U.S. and China. At this depot, $12 million worth of gleaming self-driving semis are on the move. John Wolf, right now they've got safety operators in the cab. How far are we, are we? How far away are we from runs without drivers? Chuck Price will believe we'll be able to do our first driver out demonstration runs on public highways in 2021. That's the win. As for the how. Chuck Price, our primary sensor system is our array of cameras that you see along the top of the vehicle. John Wilfheim, how about souping up vehicles? This takes it to a new level. Chuck Price, it's a little bit different, yeah. The competition is fierce, so much so that technology is akin to a state secret, but Prince points out that to a network of sensors, cameras, and radar devices strapped to the outside of the rig, all of it hired wired to an internal AI supercomputer that drives the truck. It's self-contained, so a bad Wi-Fi signal won't wreak havoc on the road. Chuck Price, our system can see further than any other autonomous system in the world. We can see forward over half a mile. John Wilfheim, you can drive autonomously at night? Chuck Price, we can, day, night, and in the rain. And in the rain at night. And they're working on driving in the snow. Chuck Price has unshakable confidence in the reliability of this technology, as do some of the biggest names in shipping, UPS, Amazon, and the postal service ship freight with two simple trucks. All in each unit costs more than a quarter of a million dollars. Not a great expense considering it's designed to eliminate the annual salary of a driver, currently around $45,000. Another savings, the driverless truck can get coast to coast in two days, not four, stopping only to refuel, though a human still has to do that. We wanted to hop in and experience automated trucking firsthand. John Wolfram, I feel like it's our turn on Space Mountain. Chuck Price was happy to oblige. We didn't know what to expect, so we fashioned more cameras to the rig than a NASA glued to the Apollo rockets. Maureen Fitzgerald, is everybody buckled in? Buckled in. Three, two, one, and here we go. Truck computer autonomous driving started. We sat back in the back, we sat in the back alongside the computer. In the front seat, Maureen Fitzgerald, a trucker, uh, trucker with 30 years experience. She was our safety driver, babysitting with the intention of gripping the wheel, but there just in case. Riding shotgun of an engineer, John Pantilla, there to monitor the software. The driver's truck was attempting a 65-mile loop in weekday traffic through Tucson. The route was mapped and programmed in before the sun, but that's about it. The rest was up to the computer, which makes 20 decisions per second about what to do on the road. As we roll past distracted drivers, disabled cars, slow pokes, and sheriffs, our safety driver keeps a visual but never disengaged the driverless system. John Pantilla, watching the t- front targets close in 100. Yep. 
got to cut in right now, 50 miles an hour, bad cut off. John, we're fine with this guy, just flagrantly cut off. Chuck Price, he really just cut off. We did not honk at him. Did we disengage? We did not disengage. This vehicle will detect that kind of behavior faster than humans. How far are we from being able to pick up the specific cars that are passing us? Oh, that's John Joe from New Jersey with six points on his license. We can read the license plate, so if there was an accessible database for something like that, we could. Drop price says that we would be valuable to company that we admit to create obvious privacy issues, but too simple does collect a lot of data as it maps more and more routes across the southwest. Their enterprise also includes a fleet of autonomous trucks in Shanghai as well as a research center in Beijing. The data collected by every truck along every mile is uploaded and used by Too Simple. They say only to perfect performance on the road. Maureen Fitzgerald is convinced that Too Simple's technology is superior to human drivers. You call these trucks your babies? What do your babies do well and what could they do better? This truck is scanning mirrors, looking 1,000 meters out. It's processing all the things that my brain could never do and it can react 15 fa times faster than I could. Most of her 2 million fellow truckers are less enthusiastic. Automated tr trucking friends to jackknife an entire $800 billion industry. Trucking is among the most common droves for Americans out of college education. So disruption caused by the driverless truck, it cuts deep. Steve Vissell, as truckers like to say, if you bought it, a truck bought it. Steve Vissell is a sociologist at the University of Pennsylvania and an expert in flight transportation and automation. He spent six months in driving a big rig. John Wortham, what segments do you think is going to be hit by driverless trucks? I identified two segments that I think are most at risk, and that's refrigerated and dry van truckload, and those constitute about 200,000 trucking jobs. And then that's what uh, was called line haul, and they are somewhere in the neighborhood 80,000, 900, 90,000 jobs. So you're talking 300,000 jobs off the top. It's a big number. It is a big number. The Florida truckers we meet represent 70 years' experience and millions of safe driving miles. They say they love the job, and asked to describe their work, they kick around words like vital, honest, and patriotic. It makes you feel like you could, should, just poke out your chest out with responsibility laugh that you're taking on kind of makes you feel like uh, you're needed. Ask about driverless trucks, they feel like they're being run off the road, but another issue troubles them even more. I think the companies need to keep safety in mind. You have a glitch in the computer at that speed, yeah, you can do some damage. There's too many things that can go wrong. One of them semis hits something small like a car or a passenger car or anything like that, it's a done deal. I mean, I was on 75 last month through a car, and there was a bad accident, so a state trooper came out. And he was hand signaling people, you go here, you go there. How is an autonomous truck going to recognize what the officer is trying to say or do? How is that going to work? Sympathy, fear, code, eye contact, I don't know how you create an algorithm that accounts for all that. You can't. Does the public have a right to know if they're testing driverless trucks in the interstate? Absolutely. That's well, that's our concern, is who's watching this? Who's making sure they're not throwing something unsafe on the road? I think a lot of it is being done with almost no oversight from them. Good government groups from the government itself. Sam Loesch represents 600,000 truckers for the Teamsters. He is concerned that federal, state, and local governments have only limited access to the driverless technology. A lot of this information, understandably, is propriety. Tech companies want to keep you know, their algorithms and their safety data secret until they can kind of get it right. The problem is that in the meantime, they're testing this technology on public roads. They're testing it next to you as you drive down the road, and that was consistent with our reporting. Do you have to tell anyone when you test? No, not for individual tests. Do you have to tell any, uh, them where you test? We do not currently have to tell them where we test in Arizona, or how often you test, no. Do you have to share your data with any state department of transportation? Currently we're not required to share data, we would be happy to share data. What about inspections? Does anybody from Arizona dot come by and check this stuff out? The department of transportation comes all the time, we talk with them regularly, it's not a formal inspection process yet. We wanted to ask Elaine Chow, Secretary of the Department of Transportation, about regulating this emerging sector. She declined an interview with providers with a statement which reads in part, the department needs to prepare the transportation systems of the future by engaging with new technologies to address safety without hampering innovation. To that point, Chuck Price is empathetic, emphatic that driverless trucks pose fewer dangers. We eliminate texting accidents, no distraction, because there's no texting while driving when there's a computer. There are no drunk computers, and the computer doesn't sleep, so there are, those are a large cause of accidents. Yeah, the driverless trucks are more fuel efficient in part because they can stay perfectly aligned in the lane, unlike humans. Our program never to speed, but it admits the profit, profit motive is significant. You think there's a lot of money to be made here? There's certainly a lot of money to be made. There's, a, there's an opportunity to solve a very big problem. Steve Vichelli says the industry is maybe imperfect, but he thinks the solution should not depend on driverless technology alone. What's your response to the technology company to say, look, I'm trying to do something more efficiently and I'm going to prove safety. This is American enterprise. What are you going to get in the way of this for? I say that's wonderful, but that's not your job, right? Your job is to make money. Policy is going to decide what outcomes are going to be trucking in a very competitive industry. A low road approach often wins. We talk about the internal combustion engine replacing the horse and buggy in Eisenhower's interstate system. We talk about these transformational markets in transportation. 
Where's driverless trucking gonna rank? Steve Vichel is gonna be one of the biggest. Oh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. I'll leave this article in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, leave my GoFundMe there as well. And leave my Instagram there as well. Peace.